All right, with this evening weather briefing for Friday, September the 8th, and this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. Well, I hope everyone had a great Friday, and we have been dealing with uh, pretty much some active uh, showers and thunderstorms over most of the day across central Florida, but it looks like it's now coming to an end as we are closing out our Friday, but there'll be some more on the way as we head into the weekend, but it won't be it won't be a washout, I promise you, but but just know but just know that if you have any plans outdoors just uh, have the rain gear handy whenever these uh, storms do develop and uh, of course we'll go over some of the uh, latest storm reports here and just uh, a little bit and also have a look at the timing on futurecast to show you who may see more rain over the weekend and also another update on the tropics again all of that here in just a little bit but i want to show you a picture uh that was uh, taken earlier today this, this is from a storm that uh moved into uh, the uh, the metro Orlando area this afternoon. And this is what this was actually posted on uh, Twitter. Okay, where my face? There it is. <laughs> All righty. So yeah, as you can see here that uh, this is a picture we'll call it a shelf cloud uh, that uh, came through with this uh, line of storms in the Orlando metro. And I believe this is uh, downtown uh, uh, is where this uh, photo was taken. And as you can see right over here, that's Camping World Stadium. And over here is uh, the 408 Turnpike. So that's, that's where this photo was taken. But still, pretty pretty ominous shot, uh, don't you think, of this uh, uh, shelf cloud uh, that moved in earlier today from those uh, line of storms. And I also want to show you uh, another uh actually it's not a picture it's, it's a video that i've uh, posted on my soul or not well basically it's twitter well it's now x but it's but it's used to be called twitter and this is a video of this uh, heavy rain and wind uh that was around my home earlier today and here it is let me, let me uh expand this here let me turn off the volume but yeah, as you can see that uh, we have we have some pretty heavy rain and some uh, wind here around my home in Windermere this afternoon when that uh, big storm came through. So, uh, so, so yeah, uh, so yeah, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty uh, ominous, uh, don't you think? Like I've said for the second time. And here's the replay once again. And there you have it. So anyways, I just want to show you again a couple of, uh, well, basically the photo and the video uh, from the uh, storms that uh, uh, came through portions of Central Florida earlier today. So, uh, and just and just, just another note uh, that uh, if you do see any, uh, like any, you know, any photos of like uh, scary looking clouds from storms or perhaps any flooding, anything weather related around Central Florida, uh, again, always feel free to send me those pictures and videos because I will definitely love to see them on my uh, social media platforms. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the radar and show you what's going on across Central Florida on this uh, Friday evening. And uh, as you can see, that uh, there are still some lingering showers happening right now uh, in parts of our viewing area. Uh, if we go ahead and zoom in over into uh, the the uh, southeast corner of Orange County and into northeast Osceola, that's where most of those light those lighter lingering showers are happening right now. And I will put the loop on here so y'all know where that's heading to. And it looks like it's moving uh, as soon as it loads up here. The uh, radar loop it's uh, quickly moving. It's quickly moving moving from the southwest to the northeast. We'll say at about uh, 40 to 45 miles an hour, but as you can see, it's starting to dissipate things just uh, a little bit. So it means that it, it which means it won't be too long that it will dissipate with this uh, band of light showers, uh, probably the next uh, hour or so. But as you can see, uh, as you can see, these uh, showers are pushing up towards the uh, 528 Turnpike, and it, and it could possibly affect uh, places like Wedgefield in the Christmas areas pretty soon. Got a couple of showers over here near Merritt Island and Rockledge, perhaps uh, some more activity. 
uh, down to the south in St. Cloud, stretching all the way down towards uh, as far south as uh, near Kenansville. So we got a couple of showers there too, and a little bit of some of that uh, shower shower activity also for the southeastern part of uh, Polk County. But for the central Florida, it looks like the rain has come to an end uh, for the evening. And, uh, and like and because of the storms, again, we have seen earlier today across central Florida. I'm going to show you some of the latest reports that I have came, that has just that just came in uh, since this afternoon. So like right up here into uh, Mary uh, up uh, up into uh, Marion County, just uh, near the Bellevue area, there have been reports from a storm spotter of uh, peace size tail at the intersection of Southeast 92nd Loop and US 441. That was reported just around after 1130 this morning. Yes, the storms did start a little early this morning and then pretty much uh, and pretty much continued at least throughout late uh, throughout uh, late afternoon. So that's why our storms are coming to an end uh, this evening. If you know what I mean. Over at the uh, Leesburg Airport, which is in Lake County, it looks like there have been reports of a storm, or I should say a thunderstorm wind gust at around 40 miles an hour. And then over here into uh, the Metro Orlando area, especially over at MCO, just after 1.30, there have been reports of a, of a measured wind gust of 47 miles an hour when the storm blew through uh, earlier. And then over in Belle Isle, there, there was a measured wind gust of 51 miles an hour. Now, if you go farther up towards the uh, north here, at least just a little bit, there have been reports of some uh, dime-sized tail when the, when the storm came through near Avala, Avalon Park uh, this afternoon. Af this afternoon, that was reported by an, an, an amateur radio operator, and that was uh, along uh, Avalon Park South Boulevard and Golden Rain Tree Boulevard in Avalon Park. That was, that was just after 11.30. And then there have been reports of some uh, uh, pea-sized tail also uh, just uh, a little north of there. This is, this is actually near Avalon Park Boulevard and Crown Hill Boulevard, and this was estimated on radar. And then over in the east side of Orange County, this is reported just after 5.30, there have been reports of rainfall estimates near the Christmas area of over 5.66 inches of rain. And that's why there was a flash flood warning in effect earlier because of the heavier rain that was, you know, I mean, continued to come down pretty heavily, but in the slow movement that caused totals to add up. But as to, but as to uh, my knowledge, I don't think there have been reports of flooding, which is a good thing. Uh, over in Brevard County, just after two o'clock, there have been reports uh, of some pea sized tail on Archdale Street in Vieira. That's in that's uh, over near the Space Coast area of uh, Brevard County. And then over down farther to the south in the Melbourne area, well, actually in Palm Bay, uh, there have been reports of some pea sized tail there too. When a storm blew, blew through earlier this afternoon, and the same also goes for about, uh, uh, about west of Melbourne, but mostly around Palm Bay High Schools where there have, where there have been reports of some pea sized tail. This was uh, after 2.30 earlier in the day. Uh, looks like there have been reports of winds of 40 miles an hour also in West Melbourne from a storm today too. And then 39 mile per hour wind gusts at Melbourne Airport. Looks like over in the LaGrange area, which is uh, near Titusville, uh, looks like uh, there have been reports from, uh, from a local weather net station of winds of uh, 40 miles an hour when a storm again did come through earlier today. And then the same goes for the play at uh, play at Linda Beach, about three miles south of there. Over in Volusia County near Turtle Mound, there have been reports of, uh, of some of some dime sized tail. This was reported by a storm spotter on Costa Rica and Edgewater. But Turtle Mound is close to there, so just so it's just prevent from any confusion. Also, more reports of, of some uh, small hail in Daytona Beach has been received, and this was reported by a storm spotter. Uh, this was at the Daytona Beach airport is where the small hail was, was uh, reported there. And then a little south, looks like another storm spotter reported of some uh, pea-sized hail on Clyde Morris Boulevard, just south of Belleville Road in Daytona. 
And then it looks like the airport measured, measured a wind gust of 39 miles an hour when that uh, storm came through. Uh, looks like uh, there have been reports of pea-sized tail in the Lehigh Woods section of Palm Coast, which is Palm Coast, which is up in uh, Flagler County. And then over in the Andal Andalusia area, which is in the western part of the county, there have been reports of some large trees down along the area of Walnut Avenue in Bayberry Street. So that was uh, from those strong winds uh, that was that was involved with that. And then there have been reports of winds uh, that estimated up for, of around uh, 46 miles an hour in, in and near the Crescent City area, which is in Putnam County. So those are, so those are all, all the reports that I've uh, that I'm seeing here on the map here. So. Uh, so, yeah, so pretty impressive. A lot of reports. So, so again, we had a lot of reports of some uh, small hail and, of course, a lot of reports of some wind gusts and, of course, a wind damage report, which is up in uh, Flagler County. All right, so let me go ahead and turn off the uh, storm report icons and go ahead and take a look and see how much rain uh, that most of you may have gotten from today. Let me turn off the uh, radar here and then turn on the rainfall map. And it looks like as we zoom in into uh, the eastern corner of Orange County, uh, looks like that's that this is where there have been some pretty high amounts of rain today that prompted the flash flood warning like over in the Christmas area. Uh, looks like the town had received up to around uh, uh, 4.1 inches, but near the city, we could go a little north, looks like between four and a half to five inches of rain fell. Uh, earlier today from those storms over near at least nearly nearly up to two inches in Wedgefield same thing or, or, yeah Wedgefield but I meant to say fifth low <laughs> now down farther south you go into uh, the let's say from the orange and into the Osceola County line there have been reports of rainfall estimates of around 3.7 inches perhaps uh, over well not over I should, I should say nearly up to two and a half in Merritt Island 2.7 right here in the northeastern corner of Osceola County. And then as I pan down to the south a little bit, it looks like uh, places like Palm Bay had received uh, of around of, of over 2.1 inches of rain earlier with uh, just over an inch of Melbourne. Now, east of Point Siena uh, looks like uh, had, had received up to 2.7 inches of rain earlier today too. And then way down farther south into southern Osceola County, just along Highway 60, just mainly we'll say southwest of Kenansville, there have been rainfall estimates that range between three to three and a half inches. So pretty, pretty impressive, uh, don't you think? But for Orlando itself, it looks like we have received uh, over just uh, 1.84 inches, which is close to two inches of rain that the Metro had, had received today. Alafaya had received of, of over 1.7 inches, or La Vista, one, and then just to the east of Lake Apopka, it looks like you have received up to 3.1 inches of rain for you when those storms blew through earlier today. Up in Sanford, looks like you have received over a half inch. Oviedo, same thing for you. Now over near the uh, Lake Mary area, which, area, which is in Southern Seminole County, you had received over around 2.2 inches of rain for you. Uh, looks like uh, over a half inch was received in, in Clearmont with 1.7 inches in Astatula, over an inch in Mascot, and then up towards Fruitland Park, just uh, over an inch was reported for you. Now, if you go farther up to the northeastern side of Lake County, basically near the Astor and the Paisley communities, it looks like you have received over 3.1 inches of rain for you when these storms moved in earlier today with uh, nearly to three quarters of an inch in Deltona, uh, nearly up to two and a half inches in Daytona, uh, over a half, inch, a, a half inch of rain up in Ormond Beach. Now, for the eastern corner of Marion County, which is far south of Salt Springs, it looks like uh, nearly up to four inches of rain was received there uh, from earlier with uh, over an inch in Pearson. Now, up in the Palm Coast area, uh, looks like over two and a half inches of rain fell for you 
with uh, just around uh, just around over three quarters of an inch in uh, Flackler Beach, just over an inch in Bunnell, and then right over here to the far western side of central Marion County, you can say. So right along Highway 27, just north of Bellevue, had received up to three inches of rain from today with uh, nearly, up to, nearly up to four inches south of town. City of Ocala, looks like you have received uh, over a quarter of an inch of rain for you with the uh, pretty higher totals up here just far northwest of the city where, as you can see, that nearly up to five inches has received there along Highway 27 northwest of Ocala with uh, over an inch in Reddick. Nearly, nearly up to uh, three quarters of an inch in Citra. And then up here as far northwest as Williston, uh, looks like uh, nearly up to three inches of rain fell there. And then for Dunnellin, which is in the, which is located in the extreme southwest corner of Marion County, looks like over an inch and a half has picked up there too. So yeah, I think most of central Florida got some pretty good rainfall totals today. But yet yeah, there's more on the way as we head into your weekend. That's why I'm going to break it down with the uh, feature cast in just a minute or so. Let me go ahead and turn off the uh, uh, the point queries on the map. So here is feature cast. And before we move on to that, if you're just coming on into this live Facebook feed on this Friday night, please do feel free, as always, to go ahead and share this with your friends families, followers, etc. And you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before we also move on to uh, FutureCast, I'm going to go ahead and share this live uh, Facebook feed to several of the group pages. So if you can give me just about the next uh, few minutes or a few minutes or so to let me uh, share this to the pay to the several of the group pages, then we'll uh, move on. All right, uh, sorry about that again, folks. All righty, so let's go ahead and look at FutureCast. Should be, should, be up, should be up and running here any second now, so just bear with me. Alrighty, so once again, I expect the rain to, uh, again, at least to end, continue to end as we head into the rest of this evening. And that means that for the rest of the evening and into the overnight, we'll be looking dry. And that will be the same case as we head towards daybreak tomorrow morning. And again, to the afternoon at, at about one o'clock, we'll see some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms uh, start to develop in our western areas of central Florida. So places like Ocala back up towards the far north near Gainesville and back down to the south around the villages. Uh, Leesburg, back over towards Sumterville, could see a few showers and storms by one o'clock in the afternoon. And then it looks like, uh, it looks like the rain coverage uh, for tomorrow may not be as widespread than it was today. So, so I think we'll call for just about a 40 to a 50% coverage of seeing a few scattered late afternoon and early evening showers and storms. So at about 6 p.m., it shows that a few storms could start to uh, bubble up up here in central Volusia County and farther north into Flackler counties that may uh, end up affecting your 
evening plans you may have outdoors. But again, I just want to, I just want to stress that it will, it will not be a washout. So don't, no need to cancel or postpone your plans that you may have outdoors, whether it's in the afternoon or evening, because again, it will not be a washout, I promise you. And then it looks like these storms will continue to linger as we head towards 8 and 9 o'clock, now affecting the uh, portions of the Orlando Metro and points east into central and north central Brevard counties, and then tapering off by midnight or so. And that will leave the overnight and into the uh, first half of Sunday morning looking quiet. Again, to the afternoon, again, the rain chance stays pretty much around average, like we'll see tomorrow, just around 40%, we'll call. So again, so like I said, not everybody will see rain tomorrow or Sunday, but some spots will. Again, mostly during the afternoon and evening. And then as the clock ends all the way towards uh, uh, overnight late Sunday and into early Monday, once again, we'll see things quiet down by then. So how much rain are we talking with these spotty storms as we head through the next couple of days? Well, here's a look at the uh, rainfall forecast on Futurecast. And again, this carries all the way through early Monday morning, and it shows that uh, most areas could see some pretty good amounts of rain through the weekend. We see these reds and purples here, like Sanford, down towards the Eatonville areas and back towards the east near Bithlow. Looks like it could end up with total somewhere, somewhere between about three to five inches, uh, if that is the case, with two to three up here towards Daytona Beach and up around Flackler Beach. Could see one to two inches right here in Titusville and down towards Melbourne, perhaps around two to three inches in around the metro, with lesser amounts along the western side of our coverage area and farther also towards the more west in the in the Gulf in the Gulf Coast side. <clears throat> so uh, so there you have it there as far as the rain totals go. The forecast of rain totals, that is, as we head through the uh, the weekend. Let's see, we got uh, Hunter Morris uh, in the house tonight. Good to have you. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the tropics tonight. And the big story, once again, is Hurricane Lee. That is still out of the Atlantic. It continues to uh, become a beast uh, since uh, last night. Turn on the uh, tropical satellite. And according to the latest advisory from the National Hurricane Center, uh, looks like... Uh, it looks like Lee is now back down to a Cat 4, but this is still a pretty dangerous storm, as you can tell on the map. Last night, it was upgraded to a Cat 5, which that was a, that was a monster to uh, see as far as the image goes on the map. But as you can see, it's a Cat 4 now with winds, uh, winds starting to die down just a little bit at 150 as it continues to move quickly due to the west-northwest at 13 miles an hour. And it looks like it will continue to stay that way as a Cat 4 through the next few days, including on Monday. But it looks like it should weaken down to a Cat 3 once it uh, gets closer into uh, at least, we'll say, the, north, the far northeast side of the Bahamas by Tuesday afternoon. But as you can see here on the latest track, it looks like it will start to uh, possibly make a right turn to the north, is what the models are still saying, uh, once, once the middle of next week arrives. So... So I think it's safe to say that we may not see any impacts at all here in Florida and perhaps for right now along the east coast of the United States, but still something to monitor closely because changes can still be made as, you know, mid to late, late of next week is closer. But it looks like uh, the Caribbean, will, uh, at least the northern Caribbean islands, uh, should be, you know, seeing less impacts with uh, Lee, with mostly just tropical storm force winds and perhaps some uh, heavy rain. But the... So the, the, the worst impacts with this storm will be mostly just north. So, so just kind of mind. And then behind it, we got Tropical Storm Margaret that is, uh, uh, as you can see, way off of the west coast of Africa. As you can tell, that winds are, are still looking to be mostly at around 40 miles an hour with about a 1,005 millibar low. And it's still moving pretty quick due west northwest at 17 miles an hour. But again, it will soon become into a hurricane, probably as we get into at least by early next week. Uh, but it will not be as an, it will not be a major hurricane than it is with Lee. So instead, it'll just be a Cat One, 
But with this storm up, once again, it will not be an issue for the east coast of the United States uh, in the next coming days. So that's a good thing to hear. Elsewhere in the tropics, such as the Caribbean and the Gulf, uh, as you can see, things are looking quiet uh, right now. And I don't expect any developments uh, happening in the next five days or more uh, over in those areas. That's a good thing we could hear. So there you pretty much have it there on the tropics. And again, I'll keep you all posted for more updates on, on Lee. Again, that is still beefing up in the Atlantic. All righty, so before we transition from this to the models, let's get a last check of the radar this evening. So we'll zoom back in uh, closer to home. And like I mentioned before, we are we are still seeing a few one or two isolator showers uh, out there this evening, but I think most areas will be looking great uh, for your evening plans. So, so the storms are pretty much done with here for the rest of tonight. Rest of tonight. So, so get out and enjoy. But again, just watch out for a few more storms as we head into Saturday and Sunday. But again, the coverage looks to be mostly returning to normal than it was today because it was kind of a little bit widespread, but not for the weekend, for sure. Alrighty. So here, so that's the Baron. <laughs> That's the Baron radar there. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, check the models tonight, and we'll fast forward into uh, Monday of next week, which is the 11th of September. And yet, it looks like we'll see our rain chances start to uh, drop at about 30% as we head towards the beginning of next week. And perhaps there'll be some uh, average to below average chances for rain as well up towards the far north you go into uh, central Georgia and for the Carolinas region, leaving Alabama and points west dry. And here are the high temperatures and it looks like we'll start to really heat things up again as we head into early next week with temperatures climbing back into the middle to upper 90s with heat indices climbing as high as the triple digits. And that may also be the case too if you go farther north across the southern tier of Alabama and into southern Mississippi, leading with uh, temperatures across most of Georgia and, in, and into the Carolinas region, looking to be mostly around normal in the upper 80s and into the low, with some spots also in the mid 90s. So that's Monday there. Now heading into Tuesday, which is the 12th of September, and once again, some of you could see a few spotty uh, isolated showers and storms, but I think most areas will be dry uh, for the most part as we head into Tuesday with also maybe a few storms up here across southern Georgia. Maybe, maybe for the east side of the Peach State too, including Augusta, and then farther towards the east and southeast into uh, Charleston. And again, any rain that does end up happening on Tuesday remains at about 30%. But the big story may just be the heat as we head into that day with temperatures once again climbing up into the middle to upper 90s with heat index values reaching as high as the triple digits with mostly mid 90s up here along the lower side of the uh, Mississippi Valley region. So, uh, so it looks like uh, we may, oops, it looks like uh, the summer heat may not be finished with us quite yet. I mean, we're getting, I mean, we're getting close, but we're just not there yet. All righty, now heading into the middle of next week, this will be for Wednesday, September 13th, and yet the rain chances that may end up happening stays quite fairly low, between 20 to 30 percent. Mostly in our northern and western counties, we'll say, including the Big Bend area of Florida, I could see a few storms as well heading into midweek, but I think most other areas will be dry. Uh, looks like it looks like there could be a better shot of some showers and storms uh, forming up, up around uh, the Mississippi Valley region hanging, heading into the uh, middle middle of next week. And that may be ahead of a cold front that will start to slide through the southeast. Well, parts of it, that is. And with that, just ahead of it, first of all, here in central Florida, the heat will still be around with temperatures yet 
hanging with us in the mid to upper 90s with heat index values reaching as high as the triple digits. But once that front starts to slide through the Mississippi Valley region by the middle of next week, that's really going to bring a, a big relief from the heat with temperatures dropping from the 90s to the uh, 70s and 80s instead. So a big taste of fall could be, could be uh, heading uh, their way. But I do really highly doubt if this will make it towards central Florida, and that's the front I'm talking about. But we'll see what happens. Looks like we'll see the rain chances start to slightly increase as we head into next Thursday, which is the 14th of September. And if so, the chances may end up, end up at around 40%, uh, we'll call it for now. And that also and that coverage could also expand a little bit up to the northeast around the Georgia coast up into the Carolinas region, leaving most areas in the Mississippi Valley region remaining dry behind the front itself. And with that, it looks like we'll see temperatures start to uh, drop things just a little bit uh, as the front gets closer with uh, temperatures getting back to around around normal, you can say, with upper 80s and into the low 90s. But if you need some more cool weather, it looks like you'll have to go farther up north because it shows that temperatures, according to the GFS in the Mississippi Valley, may stay in the low to mid 80s from, let's say, I-20 between, let's say, from Jackson to Birmingham all the way towards Atlanta and perhaps around South Carolina. But a little south of there, temperatures may be hovering in the upper 80s to at or, at or close to 90. But at least it will not be as excessively hot uh, according to what I'm seeing here on this trend. Uh, it looks like we'll see about a 50% uh, coverage of storms as we head into the end of next week, a week from today. That'll be for Friday, September 15th. So we'll have to wait and see. And with that, it looks like we could see uh, a, a some signs of relief of the, of the heat heading into the end of next week with temperatures dropping uh, from the 90s down into the middle to upper 80s instead. So the only spot where temperatures may still be stuck in the 90s will be, will be right down here into the southern and southwest corner of Florida, places like, uh, let's say, from near Sarasota, Marco Island, Fort Myers, Naples. Perhaps Fort Lauderdale could see temperatures still stuck in the 90s heading into the end of next week, and perhaps that could be the case, too, if you go farther up north into the Panhandle, which is around the Pensacola area. Temperature, temperatures up here across most areas in the valley will be mostly still feeling in the way of fall with some with some 70s and into the 80s. It does show some 60s over here near Biloxi, as you can see, as you can see on the GFS model. Let's see, we got uh, Allah uh, Ghanem, if I pronounce your name correct there, but I see that you're in the house. What about Orlando? Well, uh, I don't know if you heard me just a little while ago, but it looks like we'll still see some more on and off storms over the weekend. But I think we may be starting to dry out for, for, for most of next week, except for next Friday we'll, when we'll see this, because that's when we'll see uh, some storms returning, at least with the, a better chance, you can say. And then, of course, temperatures, you know, looks to stay uh, mostly hot, so the heat may be returning. Uh, for the most part, heading into the most part of next week with a slight bit of a cool down late next week and into next weekend, possibly. Speaking of next weekend, this is for Saturday, September 16th, and it shows that the rain chances will go up even more, probably around 60% or greater as the focus, I believe, uh, or the coverage rather, focuses from Orlando down south and back towards the west into the uh, let's say all the way up towards the Panhandle and into the Mississippi Valley region, because something could be brewing along the Gulf that may fuel up some storms. So we'll have to wait and see, but that could all change for sure as we get closer. And with that, that's going to keep temperatures again uh, less hotter, less hotter, with mostly in the low to mid 80s, with some upper 80s and low 90s down in the southern part of the state. Temperatures up in the valley will be mostly also in the same pattern with the uh, numbers ranging ranging between the upper 60s and into the low 80s so so yeah it looks like some fall weather could be coming uh in about a week so that will be nice to see
Okie dokie. And still the greater coverage of rain continues as we head into Sunday, September 17th here in Central Florida. Seems like it seems like the GFS is indicating some locally heavy rain around most of Volusia County and perhaps back towards the west a little bit into uh, Seminole County, including Sanford. Again, something we'll have to uh, watch and see, but that could change as we get closer. So I'll keep you posted. And again, that's going to keep temperatures uh, less hotter with mostly in the mid to upper 80s to around at or near 90 here in central Florida. Perhaps that may be the case, too, uh, for most areas in the Mississippi Valley region, except there'll be some 70s and low 80s for the southeastern part of Alabama and into south central Georgia and the Carolinas region. But at least I don't see any signs of significant hot temperatures to deal with. So that's hopefully a, a good thing we could use. All righty, and here is Monday, September 18th, and still those scattered hit or, hit or miss uh, storms continue with a better chance for now. Look, to be focusing just to the north and east of Orlando uh, at the moment, leaving most areas in the Mississippi Valley region on the uh, dry note. But it looks like some, it looks like some of these uh, 90s could be returning as we head into the 18th. Not just in the low, but some spots could see uh, temperatures rise as high back as, as the mid 90s. If if this is the case, heading into that day with upper 80s and low 90s, which is around normal for this time of year in the summer, for our friends up in the Mississippi Valley region, and perhaps the same also for the Florida Panhandle region too. Alrighty, as we are now entering the land of voodoo country, this takes you to Tuesday, September 19th, and it seems that uh, I think uh, all of Central Florida and down south will see a pretty good shot of some showers and storms, uh, if that is the case. If so, the rain chances on that day may be, may be sitting around between 50 to 60 percent uh, if, again, if this trend is right. That leaves the Mississippi Valley region looking to be rain-free heading into that day, so we'll see. And with that, we're still talking temperatures again, running around average in the upper 80s and into the low, perhaps some of you in the mid 90s. Perhaps there'll be some low to mid 90 uh, degree temperatures as well. If you go just a bit north uh, around the central and the lower portions of the Mississippi Valley region. But like I've mentioned before, it's, too, it's uh, nearly a week out, so it's too soon to say. But remember, models can always change for sure as we get close to the second half of September. So I'll keep you posted for sure. And still more scatter hit or miss storms continue as we head into Wednesday, September 20th. And if so, the chances of seeing any of that stays at about 50%, uh, but leaving again, most areas of the Mississippi Valley uh, looking to be rain free. Could be a few showers and storms as well for the Southern tier of Alabama and for Southern and Southwest Georgia too, but nothing quite as scattered than, than it may be for here. And once again, we'll see temperatures remaining close to normal in the upper 80s and into the low, perhaps some of you in the mid 90s. But it seems that yet another strong cold front may start to make its way through the Mississippi Valley region by that day. And if so, just right behind it, temperatures may start to drop from the 90s, 80s down into the 60s and 70s in areas like Birmingham, Atlanta, Jackson and points north as far as Tennessee. So we'll have to watch and see. But again, it's a. Uh, Still, again, about two weeks away, and remember, models can still change for sure as we get closer. And then here is Thursday, September 21st, and it seems that the rain coverage for Central Florida will start to wind down back to 30 to 40 percent. And if so, the, uh, any chances of rain will be focusing up here just to the north of Orlando. So places like Ocala, the Villages, Leesburg, Back up towards the northeast into Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, and farther up towards the northeast is the Carolinas. We'll see a better shot of some more scattered uh, late day shower and thunderstorm activity. So that leaves the Mississippi Valley region looking dry as well. Same thing for Orlando and points south in most areas. 
And with that uh, new front, it looks like we'll start, we'll start to see temperatures in the Mississippi Valley region and perhaps as far south as the northern part of Florida feeling the, feeling the cold front. And if that is the case, it may start to uh, uh, feel more like in the way of, of a fall type pattern with uh, temperatures dropping from the 90s down into the 70s and 80s, lower 80s that is. And if so, there, there could be some low humidity with that too. So that'll be nice. But again, it's two weeks out because it could change for sure as we get closer, but we may still be ahead of it uh, for central Florida and south. And if so, uh, we still we could still see temperatures again remaining in the upper 80s and into the low with some spots, especially down in southern Florida, uh, climbing as high as the middle 90s. And then here is two weeks from today. That'll be for Friday, September 22nd. And I see something trying to brew right down here towards the Caribbean. And if that is the case, that could be something tropical-wise we may have to watch. But again, it's two weeks away, so that could always change for sure as we get closer. But we could still see a better shot of some storms, uh, if, that, if that is correct, for the northern and the eastern side of our state. If so, the rain coverage for, for the 22nd will be mostly around 50 to 60 percent. That leads to the Panhandle and farther north into the Mississippi Valley region. Remaining dry at the moment. And with that, we'll see temperatures look to be below 90 degrees heading into that day. So no, so no more 90s as far as I'm seeing. And the same also may end up happening for the Mississippi Valley region. So... We'll see what may happen by then, but again, it's two weeks out, and that could always change for sure as we get closer. And it looks like that tropical mischief may start to um, make its way a little bit to the northwest uh, heading into the day on Saturday, September 23rd. And with that, it could, it could start to increase our rain chances right here in central Florida, so we'll have to watch and see. But it looks like the, uh, the significant impacts, as far as I'm seeing here, maybe around the Cuba area, uh, if this is right. And with that, once again, temperatures looks to stay mostly uh, between the upper 70s and into the low 80s at this time. So looking uh, to be, again, feeling more like fall heading into later this month. So we'll see. Could be some low to mid, mid 80s up here as well for the Mississippi Valley region. But let's uh, take a look at the wind product and see if there's anything interesting as far as organization goes with that potential tropical mischief that's trying to brew in the Caribbean. And oh yeah, it does show some well well or it does show something well organized uh, as you can see here uh, as it moves closer into the Havana area. But it seems that it will not be hopefully not an impact right here into uh, central or perhaps southern Florida. Uh, if this is if this is the case but remember it's two weeks out and it's too soon to say so we'll see what happens but i'll keep you posted for sure now as we head into sunday september 24th and oh boy it does show that this uh, significant uh, impacts with this potential mischief may start to turn to the uh, to the right, which means it may push up towards the north, and that could possibly bring some impacts for portions of our state. So that's something we may not, we do not want to hear. But uh, again, this this is something we could still keep an eye out for. But you know, it's two weeks away, and that could all change as we get closer. But it does show some pretty good chances for rain with that uh, tropical mischief around across most of the Sunshine State with some locally heavy rain running up to two to four inches around places like, uh, let's say from Marco Island, Naples, uh, Fort Myers, you name it. But if you go down here towards the Keys, it shows the rain could be very, very heavy for imprinting some widespread totals of around 10 to 12 inches near the Key West area. And if that, if that, is, if that is the case, of course, but we, but we don't know for sure, uh, that could really lead to the potential for some catastrophic flooding so lots to watch, but again, it's two weeks away, and hopefully we'll know for sure once we get closer to the last weekend of that month. But for temperatures, it looks like we'll be mostly in the 70s and into the low 80s right here in and around central Florida with mid to upper 80s up towards the far northwest and parts of Mississippi and Alabama, and perhaps as far west as Louisiana goes. 
But again, let's go ahead and take a look at the wind product and see if we do see something still well organized with that potential mischief. And yet it still does. So as you can see that it may, it may end up again, taking the right turn to the north affecting portions of our state, but let's hope it's not the case. But again, we'll have to wait and see once we get close to the last weekend of the month. But no need to panic. So I'll definitely let you know for sure if models do change, which I'm sure it will. All righty, so let's go ahead and wrap up this broadcast uh, tonight. So hope you guys enjoy your weekend, and I will see you back right here live Monday night for another live Facebook weather update. And I will continue, as, as usual, by posting more notes and updates on my blog and social media platforms 24-7. In the meantime, uh, please continue to uh, stay safe by taking care of yourselves and each other, and God bless.